Hello there, I'm John and today we are zooming live to join fast and loose watercolourist Catherine Beale live from the historic city of Bath, England, where we're going to be exploring boats and their water reflections. Uh, this free art tutorial is a shorter prelude to Catherine's two to three hour workshop webinar in a few weeks time and gives you the opportunity to decide if you'd like to join us for the full event and therefore pay Catherine for her time. Uh, Catherine specialises in super vibrant, gravity painted experimental watercolours and started her artistic practice um, back in Singapore in the 1990s. And then since returning to the UK in 2006, she's been taken by the Cotswold countryside around her hillside studio with its mists and woods and does lots of lovely landscapes and portraits too. Uh, if this is your first time watching one of these live shows, although you can just watch, they're actually designed for you to paint along with. If you want to give it a go, the recommended materials and reference photos and pictures can be found on our website shopkeeparty.com. A direct link is also in the description below. So without further ado, let's zoom to Catherine now. Although these Zoom events are also streamed live on YouTube, there is a slight delay. For the best experience, you can join the actual Zoom webinar for free via our website. With leading artists from around the world, they're designed as a taster to their upcoming longer workshop webinars, as well as giving you a boost of creative inspiration. I think I can see Catherine down there. Yes, she's poking her head out. She's gone back into the <laughs> studio. There she is. Hello, Catherine. Hi there. Thanks so much, John. Thanks, everybody. Lovely to hear from you and all the places you are. I know. Very exciting. From all around the world, and it's really lovely to have you. Now, um, this is obviously the first of many shows together, I'm sure, and it's a funny how you found us because a number of people that were taking part in art workshops with you kept mentioning Shopkeep Arty, as I understand it. Is that that's is that right? right. Yes, that's right. I, it was really great. Um, I got recommended. There were three people who mentioned you to me, and um, yeah, it was, I thought I'd get into touch and it's been great to to have chat since then i yeah, think we've well, got really... a few personal connections as well haven't we which i we didn't know, realize. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, which i may mention later because my <laughs> my my mom well my family is from bath so well i'm glad uh, you found us anyway and i can't wait to get started um but before i do just a quick 30 second word on how today's live event will work so first of all We'll walk through the preparation and this might include sketching, talking theory or applying the first layers of paint. And then while that dries, we'll take the opportunity to see some examples of Catherine's previous works of art for inspiration, as well as discuss her upcoming two to three hour workshop webinar in a couple of weeks time. And then finally, we'll complete the short tutorial by adding more layers and detail to the painting, after which you can then share what you've done on our Facebook or Instagram page for comments and feedback. So without further ado, let's get back to Catherine and we'll make a start. So Catherine, today we are doing boats and their reflections uh, probably on a canal fairly close to you <laughs> i would imagine this photo. yes we're very lucky we have a both a river the river avon gets in from bristol or i suppose out at bristol and we also have the canal which feeds off the avon the canal goes all the way from bristol through bath all the way up to um westminster would you believe so we've um in my old school we some people did actually take um a canoe all the way up there Did so they, seriously yeah, wow. yeah seriously wow. yeah you have to you back then you used to have to take your canoe out of the canal occasionally because it wasn't completed now it's absolutely pristine watery lovely uh everyone's on on the boats enjoying themselves fantastic barges and of course a wonderful subject yeah, yeah it is and diana says that uh, she spent a memorable valentine's day in bath on her 10th wedding anniversary oh. and will never forget the town or the lovely heart-shaped scones so <laughs> <laughs> very romantic i love that it is a romantic city it, it really is. is lots of jane austen references everywhere you go so. <laughs> yeah, yeah no that's really nice so i can see we've got the picture of the reference photo of the boat behind you that's and right. how would you recommend starting let me put the camera on a close-up of that mm. and maybe you can talk so, through the sketch and the first layers 
Yeah, we've really not got a lot of time today. So what I was probably going to suggest is um, we maybe leave out that landing stage or we can actually wash it off because it's lighter than the rest of the picture. We could maybe towards the end, see if we can just get some of that landing stage back. But what I am going to show you is how to retain your white boat at all costs. And um, because a lot of watercolorists, they will build up gradually from light to dark. I'm actually in the reverse um, camp. I start dark with all my darkest paints. So that's particularly important to keep that area of boat completely dry of any water and paint so that we keep it all, all gleaming and white. Um, at the end of the day, there are various things you can do to resolve issues. I'm My picture's no doubt going to drip all over the place. So I will be <laughs> trying to wash off chunks of paint, I'm sure, because I've got it very vertical indeed. Well, that sounds... And do you normally work as vertical as this? Or? I work a little bit less vertical. Having said that, more and more frequently, I'm enjoying the drips. So <laughs> I'm just embracing the drips now a bit more. So okay. you, if, you can do either if you want to, a real excitement and jeopardy. Tilt your board really steeply and you'll get more drips but you will get fewer of the sort of uh, blousy cauliflower shaped watermarks um the gravity will just take that water and rush it down the bottom of your page brilliant no that's a good tip and going from dark to light as well that's yeah. going to be a new one for a lot of our audience as well <laughs> yes. so looking forward to doing it a bit of a different <laughs> so it's a different one see we we'll introduce all these different techniques every yeah. week um right so let me put put it onto uh this camera and uh, okay well maybe if we could pop back to the full okay. screen i was just going to do a little bit of a drawing here how i would approach a drawing of this um okay. And um, then you'll be able to see sort of the, the idea. Um, I would always um, try and establish a couple of key simple ideas at the beginning. One thing you'll notice in the picture is there is a water line, which is effectively a sort of horizon. So the water line being where the actual vegetation meets the reflected vegetation. So I would I would normally do this in pencil. I'm just doing it in pen so you can see it because it's it's quite often hard to make pencil show up. But then I would, um, having decided how much of the water I'm deciding upon and how much of the um, vegetation, I'd go straight on and try and grab that focal point. For me, the focus is where the darkest areas meet the lightest. And for me, with this picture, I mean, the whole of the boat is rather lovely, but I would also say there's something rather nice at the front end of the boat here, where there's a real dark area and then the hull of the boat, the prow of the boat there. And then now, just, don't... Catherine, sorry. just a quick question from Andrew. Does he need to run upstairs for his masking fluid? No, I'm going to avoid having to use masking fluid okay. just for, for time purpose. Okay, for the, perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, but you're right. Um, sometimes masking is a very helpful, handy uh, intervention. And I, I, I use it less and less, I've got to admit, um, just because I find you have to restore those edges where the masking's been. And, and sometimes uh, it's not, not exactly what you would want. So anyway, more of that at the workshop, I guess. But um, so simple little drawing literally of the boat and um, if you are going to go ahead at home and or in your studio and put in the um, dock then I guess you would really have to establish how low down that dock is coming to the water and I warn you it's quite an interesting sort of area that between the dock and the water nice and dark so fun to paint but there are these little lit um uh, supports underneath and then of course the steps which I did tackle last time but um, today we'll see. So if we switch to the um, actual source photo you've all got your source photo in front of you hopefully. I'm just going to drop that down and I am going to go to this little pencil drawing which I just literally began before we came on air so to speak. So it's um, just in 2B pencil, it's nice and soft, so rather than a hard pencil that will create um, channels in the paper. And um, in this case, just have a look. You can even measure on your source photo, but um, check how similar the height of the boat is to um, its reflection. 
Um, this can vary depending on the viewpoint of the viewer. So just have a look at that, particularly buildings, tricksy things, reflections. So we've got a couple of um, bits of the dock and then we've got, um, it's a very interesting area. This some people have brought sofas and <laughs> dining chairs down to the water. They've all got these lovely landing stages. Very lovely. So that landing stage is going to be highlighted by the um, surrounding foliage. So I've just charged up my palette. Maybe we'll switch back for a moment just to have a look at the palette. Keep you busy, John, sorry. <laughs> so I have got um, two palettes typically, one roughly uh, the cool colors there and one that's a warmer colors. Um, I keep them with paint in because you'll see another difference. I drop real colors into um, into water on the page. So I don't mix in my palette, I mix on the page. So uh, see if you want to try change. that. <laughs> yeah. Bit experimental. I am an oil painter, so I like to use thick, thick paint. So everything from, if you have a little look in the bottom here, it's a bit, a bit dirty. In this well is turquoise. It comes out a little bit mid blue actually on my camera but there is a lump, a black lump here of solid turquoise tubed paint. And then um, what I'm doing is with the br big brush that I recommended, the one inch, um, I'm just grabbing water with it. So it's just a sort of um, a water transport device at the moment. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a little lake. You can see it glistening at yeah. the bottom there. So now what do I have? I've got solid black effectively from turquoise you'd think that was the lightest color in your palette it is as well so we're going to see that today turquoise is an amazing thing jennifer says what a great idea to have a cool palette and a warm one yeah it's the way it's worked out it's interesting isn't it i suppose um you've got to get organized somehow and then you get used to where everything is and then you can't imagine changing but of course then i also have the odd extra stray color which i end up putting in these little um uh pots just separately just that's so a goo pot i think yeah I think <laughs> <laughs> it helps uh, give me permission to eat dessert basically yes, these ram yeah. ramekins you can buy them <laughs> without anything in but i do eat dessert yes exactly so some fun new colors can always be introduced um separate from your palette and um uh, just the key is I don't have any tiny palettes. They tend to be nice, deep wells, because as a, if you've painted with watercolour, you'll know they're a dry lighter. So best to try and load up as much um, pigment as you can initially, because then it won't dry lighter and you won't have to go back over, which disturbs the paint. Yeah. Karen That's says a... we all need goo pots. Yes. I... <laughs> <laughs> What an invention. I don't know what we did without them. We could do a live stream just on the different goo pots and what, what, what you can have. Cheese I'm open cake. to sponsorship oh, wow. deals. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Definitely. So let's go back to the um, picture, which has yeah. just got a few little scratches of pencil on at the moment. So this pencil will be covered up pretty quickly. So I am going to take my one inch flat brush and actually sculpt around these shapes with solid paint. So let me show you, I'm going to show the brush. Do you see that lump on the end? That corner of the brush is a very useful, sort of almost like a spade. You can get hold of solid paint. So let's see, this is the bottom of the um, landing stage and we're going straight in with the edge of the boat. And then, and do you see, I've got the corner that I've jabbed into my, this is burnt umber. I've actually used that corner to really clearly create that hard edge. Okay, the pencil line's not in quite the right place, but you can change your mind while you're painting, no problem. So I'm just doing that. That burnt umber is a quite a hefty paint. It's um, a, bra a deep red brown. Um, now I'm just introducing the brush to my water jar just to give it a bit of movement. And now we've got that area of water that we can now drop in some of the foliage. Sap green is um, a, a great choice for, for natural greens. And then if I want it to cheer up, which because it's a little bit dirgy because they're both 
uh, dense colors, they're quite granular. Then I'll just reach for a little bit of Windsor lemon uh, for Windsor and Newton, but lemon yellow basically. And drop that in. Do you see the gravity creating those classic sort of reflect reflected shapes? And of course, there's a lot of jeopardy involved, but then you go with the flow and you start moving away from your picture, the image that you, you looked at initially. And then you just maybe start to um, alter it in your head, create, uh, use some creativity. So we've got that turquoise. There was a sky beneath, um, above, I mean. <laughs> and so let's put some sky in here. I'm still avoiding that um, boat. Don't want to cover it with... Uh, any paint. I'm going into the liquid turquoise, the very light turquoise. Turquoise is amazing. It's such a thin, fine, lightweight paint. It does stain though. So this is a suggestion of the sky and it's um, going to have a little bit of a cloud there maybe. Kitchen roll was on the list. You can't see but just off camera. I'm getting quite a lot of drips. So I'm just going to run my kitchen roll along the base. But you can let them stay there and form interesting shapes as well. Um, drips are brilliant. They're, I do embrace them, like I say. So let's go and look at this far side. And I'm just going to stand up because now I'm off camera. I can stand up and go. I tend to paint standing up, I've got to admit. I like um, to see uh, correct perspective. So it's very helpful to get up and over your painting. So the top end of your painting is um, not too far away. Do you see I'm turning my brush a little bit? So using corners, using just flicking to create more organic shapes. So that's a bit of the um, uh, reflection in. I'm just going to have to deal with the actual, the first layer of the actual um, foliage because it's going to rush down a bit. As I go in with the solid paint again, Let's go into the side of this um, landing stage, get that at the right height about there. Very green and slimy under there. We can add, obviously keep adding lots of other colors, um, but feeding in those darks, you can see how um, they're actually, in your brain, they probably just seem to be almost black, even though they're a color. So this is my oil painterly sort of, past coming back so just going carol's on. asked what's the name of the turquoise paint you like good so? question it's fallow turquoise but to be honest um non-fallow turquoise is also amazing just anything branded turquoise because it seems to be a very inky lightweight paint regardless of the manufacturer um really ethereal really soft actually that's right on the edge of your view so i'll just come in a little bit more Yes, I'm just adding in a little bit more of the turquoise just while we talk about it. Uh, we're going to have some reflections in here um, later on. So I need to know that I've got paint that's going to show those up. Because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut into this paint with my almost knife-like brush later. So let's just indicate that there's a bit of a a bush coming up there. So it's a weird, I'm sort of, you're painting this twice, thinking all the time about what might be above. Um, but this is going to be the, the sort of solid, um, clear cut um, part of the painting. I'm just going to go in with this very usefully sharp edged brush to create the a little hint of the waterline, just so you know where we are. So that's that's the reflection. There's the boat. Now let's go up above. I'm not particularly interested in this bank. I'm more interested in the water, to be fair. <laughs> so this is um, actually quite um, wet on dry for me. Bit of jeopardy being this vertical. Keeps more control if you have less water. Building up. The foliage, remember the foliage color has already been established in this reflection. And it will flow down a little bit, that's fine. Very interesting and soft. 
because of course wet watercolors create atmosphere dry watercolors there's not so much atmosphere in them you can choose different yellows here i love cadmium yellow too just see how high up yes we're off there so let's and do you go. find yourself typically painting with a with a flat head brush like i that? tend to like the idea of the brush being an extension of my hand just so that i don't have to constantly look at my table around me i'm just looking at the picture and then eventually i'm only looking at my painting nothing else will disturb my mm. my contact it's like connection isn't it i don't want to break that connection while we're in this first layer, I'm just going to go in a little bit heavier there because I do, and uh, we can build that up again later. There's a bit of reflection of the underneath of this. And um, I don't want to lose too much of that lovely turquoise. I do like it. So you can choose to keep drips. These, I'll leave that one just so you can see what happens. I love this area here. So I'll go around looking at the bits that I like and dislike at this point, just leaving it alone and letting the water dry. A couple of things I like, I like this, I like this area here, but I really don't like the hardness of that brush stroke. We're not doing brush strokes yet. Second half, I'll be doing brush strokes. Over this side, there's a couple of drips as well. Hmm, I think I'll leave them in, but maybe use a thirsty brush technique, which is basically squeezing the water out of the brush so it's damp only, not wet. And then it will, just by offering up the corner of the brush into that drip, it'll remove it with minimum disturbance, basically. So you can keep all that other lovely softness going on. Uh, Jennifer's asked, do you always paint the lower half first? Um, in this case, because we're talking about reflections, I try not to procrastinate. I think if we're, if the reflections is the subject, it's very easy to shy away from them. I prefer to try and build everything up around what I'm interested in. And in this case, yes, it's re the reflections. Another time, for instance, I might put this horizon much um, lower down and then there'd be much more scope for the bank um more information about the bank and then um of course if you're doing large landscapes you've also got skies to consider maybe you're a, a love skies or maybe the subject's begging for large skies and then you might drop the horizon down it's mm. all about what is your what is that particular um subject so you note know that this is all very dry just before we have a little bit of a a break I'm just going to put in some of these steps now the great thing about this step is uh, they are pretty even so I can almost print with my brush and um, I'm just going to make it more logical I'm just going to just put a bit of suggestion of a bush there so that you would actually have green and then let's go down so this brush is very sculptural and helps put control back in because it is a bit scary if you're using a vertical board. Yeah, you are using it a little bit like a palette knife in a, in a certain sort of yeah. way, probably from your oil days, I guess. Yes, yes, I think it is. And also it's um, a function of doing portraits. You can imagine how likenesses are so important mm. and um, you are sculpting people's sort of chins and, and cheekbones, etc. Um, I said I was going to use some salt. <laughs> Let's just give myself a space to put that in. This is all very light um, yellow, the yellow and blue. That would have taken salt beautifully. Let's just put a little bit over here. I'm purposefully putting more turquoise in because I know turquoise is a lightweight paint and it will take um, table salt. This is has to um, be given a bit of a chance to dry. It's a bit like a Polaroid. If you've used it before, you'll know what I'm talking about. It needs to almost develop. Um, it's not um, the first little dints of salt that you're looking for. You're actually looking for the um, where the actual grains soak up some of the water. Mm -hmm. So you've so, just literally thrown that at the page, have you? Yes. Let me just sprinkle it. I can see it of, taking effect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wonder if we can move the camera back. I was just line. thinking that. What I'll do is actually I'm going to move this a little bit. 
Okay, so we've got a little bit off here now. Um, it gets a little bit swamped when I'm on the vertical, but it will gradually take effect. Yeah. What you'll be seeing is the drips quite strongly. Um, but remember, we've got none of the sharpness of the boat in at all. So you're looking at a blank white patch against um, paint. So you just got to uh, try not to remove too much paint because that whole problem of going back in. Mm -hmm. uh, now, would this be a good chance to have a break while this dries? Or yes, why don't we? Yeah, okay, and good. then I'll take an assessment of um, yeah, 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 take an where assessment. we are, and I can show you a couple of little drips. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So, um, while we wait for that to dry, let's um, take a look at some of Catherine's previous works for inspiration. I'm quite intrigued about this not just because of, of Catherine's subjects, but also because of where it is. And she, she intimated <laughs> at the start of the, the show, but my family originally comes from Bath and actually my mom, I can see, is actually watching today. Um, so, and a lot of these scenes on the canal, their house actually backs onto the canal. So um, some of these scenes are actually a stone's throw away from where my mom and dad live. So uh, anyway, hope you enjoy me, mom. <laughs> and uh, we'll now have a look at some of Catherine's other works of art. So what have you got, what, what have you picked out for us? Right, the first one I've picked out is actually a little print. It's um, Canal at Sydney Gardens. It was originally a very large watercolour and it's a very popular location for painters in Bath. Most people go, ah, yes, when they see this, because it's directly behind the Holborn Museum, which is a very nice art museum, which people have tea at. And this, these bridges date to the 1900, around 1900, they stuck the canal straight through the pleasure gardens. They were originally called Vauxhall Gardens, like the ones in London. And uh, they, uh, the Holborn Museum was a hotel. So you can imagine how people did not like that at all, because at that point, the canal was a dirty, smelly um, place. So they had when to I, when I was a kid, it. When I was a kid, I always <laughs> used to like walking through that tunnel and, and shouting at the top of my voice, because you've got some oh, brilliant echoes. It's absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah, no, it's yeah. a lovely, it's a lovely scene, and uh, and in fact, that big house that's on top, that's actually a private house. It was bought and it used to be offices, and it was bought and converted into a residential. What just one house, and it's absolutely massive. <laughs> There's a um, hole in the bottom underneath the tunnel where they used to take the taxes or the whatever the. the oh, oh, I didn't know. And uh, it claims to be the first purpose-built office in the world. Wow, really? <laughs> yeah, I think most cities claim lots of those sorts of things, but uh, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so further down the road, moving away from Bath, and we've got another print here, which is quite natural colours. Um, I'm just beginning to discover the power of paint, but if you look closely, there's a bit of ultramarine, a bit of um, cadmium yellow and yeah, that's pinks lovely. in there. You've um, put the mist really well there as the sun's coming through the trees. It's, it's nothing lovely. like water for watercolours, whether that be yeah. water as in running water or mists or clouds. Yeah. Um, water vapour is great too. Yeah, lovely. Here's another picture back to Bath, just keep you on your toes. So this is a recent one. It's quite a, sort of a strong picture. It's, it's from in the dust, just as the point when the lights go on, but there's still a little bit of light in the sky. And this oily reflection was just a bit of experimentation. Um, not as bright and breezy as some of the others, but um, I rather enjoy this sort of, uh, you know, yeah, dark, yeah. dingy reflections. Lovely. And then uh, off to um, a well-known landmark, but you may not know this side of it. It is Pulteney Bridge, but everybody knows the other side. And so this is the scruffy side yes. <laughs> where the storerooms of all the shops are. And nobody looks at it. So you have to sort of know where to stand. But um... yeah, I, li I like these sort of hidden uh, views that uh, <laughs> are the typical tourist things. I, I really like those sort of things. No, yeah that was, that was fantastic thank you <laughs> for sharing just a that. little bit of a semi-abstract yeah. one to finish with <laughs> so that is a wave i do love coasts and things and um water isn't always peaceful and calm oh that's lovely thank mm. you so much for sharing those with us and um before we uh start talking about the workshop as well let us know in the chat which which of those paint, paintings really inspired you what, what grabbed you and if you are watching us on youtube as well and you're loving the art that you're seeing we'd really appreciate if you could give us a a thumbs up youtube then recommends this show to more people and it helps us then inspire more people to give 
art a try, young and old alike. So thank you in advance. Now let's go back uh, to Catherine and we'll discuss what we're going to be covering in two weeks time. As you know, these free shows are free and neither SKA or the artists receive any money from you to enjoy it, which is why their longer workshop events are designed to give you the best experience while rewarding the professional artists by paying them for their time. Um, since we go at your speed and don't have time constraints in the longer workshops, you'll also end up with a work of art that you can be proud of as well. Well, hopefully. <laughs> Um, so, Catherine, um, what I can I can see you're holding it up there, and <laughs> yes. my mom will definitely recognise this scene as well because um, it's literally 200 metres away. Um, so, a beautiful scene here, and it's got and I think you've called it the Blue Canal as, as the yes. title. Yes, I mean uh, it's it was one of those days when you walked along and everyone was whispering because it felt like an ice rink and sound was carrying, and um, it was cold, very very cold. And um, there was a, a, a whopping blue um, boat that's moored up a lot of the time. This one's very well known as well, this green one. I think it must be um, you know, permanent moorings there. But um, the blue tones help the feel of cold. And then we've got some interesting violets that sort of tie in with that blue colour scheme. Um, so we'll be tackling uh, a different sort of boat, and but still calm reflections, easier to do. We'll be cutting in to create these the soft fo out of focus um, reflected subjects. Yeah, as well lovely. as looking at trees briefly, a winter tree subject as well, which is fun. And yeah. we'll be using. Fine it's got a bit of everything that because you've got you've got the water, you've got the reflections, you've got the going into the distance with the landscape, you've got the the light, the light and the shade mm. of the trees and the buildings. Uh, it's got a bit of everything really. So well, it's uh, a full it's the full picture, but I think you've got a a large proportion of it on the source photos. So. Yes. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Looks absolutely amazing. And I'm, I'm sure even my mum might be persuaded to do <laughs> this one. Are you listening, mum? So and if you do want to join Catherine, myself and my mum uh, for this event, it's taking place on Tuesday, the 16th of November. And it's going to be at half past three in the afternoon UK time. Uh, to secure your place, you can either book by clicking the pop up link just here or um, I'll share my screen now and I'll show you how to book it on our website. Uh, since it's Catherine's first time with us, we've also got a special discount for our patrons as well. So you head over to our website, shopkeeparty.com, um, and then you click on the live events tab at the top. And then if you scroll down all our upcoming live events and to the data said 16th of November, click on the see details button and it'll then open up the page that gives you a lot of information about Catherine's workshop. Um, you can find out everything about what you're going to be learning just there, so, a lot of which we've just uh, talked about now. The reference photo that you'll be using, an example painting that she just showed you. Uh, here are the recommended materials. But if you haven't got exactly the materials, anything that's similar uh, will be fine. If you do want to top up on anything, we've got a, a great 10% off uh, discount from Jackson's Art that ships globally. Uh, if you do want to book your video, you click the book webinar. But here, if you are a patron, uh, <laughs> zooming in, 20% uh, discount if you click that link there. Um, so you come through to Catherine's shop and you can either book the webinar or order the video if you um, can't make the webinar. Um, if you can make the webinar, you can order the video as well at a, a special price and just simply add that to the cart and then check out. And it is in pounds, but depending on what your currency is, your local bank or card will convert that to your local currency afterwards. If you do order the video or pay for the video, you can then head over to our video library and you'll be able to search for Catherine on the artist drop down and find her video in the future so that you can watch it. Okay, time to get back to Catherine for the next phase of the class and uh, adding a little bit more detail onto this boat. So back with you, Catherine. Great. Thank you very much, John. So um, if we zoom in a little bit onto this picture yeah. again. We've got a little bit of salt action in this corner. So um, what happens is each grain actually picks out, um, sort of sucks up water from around it and then leaves a little hole 
So there's some better examples in this little top area here. And um, it's very good for just um, random foliage, uh, suggestions of foliage. So that's what I use that for. Just rearrange that. Um, so bit. Jennifer said the Coventry Canal is at the front of their garden. And uh, ah. so really love looking at narrow boats and reflections. So a perfect one for you, Jennifer, this, isn't it? Oh, and yeah. she also loves the wave. And um, and ever said these are just wonderful catherine that you're oh, very kind thank um, you so much yeah and karen said i just loves the shabby side of pulteney bridge so different from the side we normally see um victoria <laughs> loved the house with the tunnel in front and the trees in the mist Car carolyn uh, thought it's great demo loved the waves waves really fascinate her and anne loves the early mist morning with the sun coming through beautiful mm. um jennifer can't wait to do the workshop so oh, fantastic. That'll, that'll be great um, <laughs> And now I've had another question for Alison. If we don't have artboard, do you get the same effect with watercolour paper? Right. So um, I started off with paper and if you stretch it, um, it will help. But um, I would just recommend not having quite as much water, probably because of the buckling. So okay. um, it will tend to buckle even if you've stretched it. Um, but persevere. if it's heavyweight paper and you've maybe secured it at the edges, you've got a much more fighting chance. Um, the reason I use the board is it's pretty it's attached to mount board so the paper is stretched like a drum it won't move so i can allow these water features to just stay un unmaneuvered by individual wrinkles so mm -hmm. you can imagine you've got a bit more control it's building back control that's what it is but do um yes just the the, the heaviest paper you can find um we'll be working a three size so if you can okay. maybe prep some beforehand, that'd be great. Yeah. I've just left everything alone during this break to show you some of these watermarks. So um, if you, this, I often call it experimental watercolor as well, because these little watermarks can do all sorts of interesting things. Um, in a much larger landscape, you can imagine some of these being wonderful bushes or hedges or trees. Yeah. So um, really quite, wonderful and this is what i'm interested in or but then of course we've got to show something tighten up maybe in a little bit now so what you can do is work much drier in the second half i'll actually even grab and borrow paint from the surroundings and the great thing about that is it creates automatic curvature to this boat because the paint will be thicker closer to the edge so that was a um a damp brush pulled from the water and now i've just cleaned it so that i can soften that inner edge so we're starting to get a bit of curvature maybe just in there if you can see i might go back to that area and beef it up again but um this slightly muddy look um appropriate for the river so we'll let that dry for a little bit and come back to the detail of the boat. But I'm just going to meanwhile go a little bit into, we haven't used any raw sienna. If I'm introducing a color at this point, I would probably try and put it in more than one place because it will stand out like a sore thumb if it's on its own. But as I'm putting it in here, make it look, I'm actually able to use it for the landing stage. Now, if we had more time, I'd be spending a lot more time making sure this is all beautiful. As it's a sketch, we don't have to so much. What we want is this boat to stand out. And um, if you see, because of the flat brush with all the bristles at the same length, I can actually pull straight across some of these features and they're left without being um, sullied by the, the bristles. It's stabbing movements that, that lift your paint. Um, in addition to that, you can actually cut into this paint by just rubbing on this board. So this is another feature of this board. You, it's very forgiving. So I'll just um, cut into that there, just a bit of light on the top. And you just try and um, keep your brush relatively clean when you're wiping it away. So. We've got a little bit of drippage on the on this uh, wood. Let's just put in a little bit more detail now. So we've got an edge. Not the thing I'm most interested, but we'll just put that in so that the boat can dry. We want that boat to be 
clean white above, sorry, below the landing stage. Go back to that landing stage another time, but here's another example of how you can cut through into that watercolor. Do you see that? Grab the kitchen roll, to, or don't, <laughs> but you can make sure the, boat, the um, drip doesn't run into your boat. So that's a very supple, subtle way of creating form within, um, particularly the grainy paints. We'll talk more about that in the workshop. Now let's get a little bit of a, um, a reflection going, a little ripple. So I'm actually going to cut through the green and create soft horizontal shapes, just the wind catching the top of the water, maybe. And uh, at this stage, I'm working from the imagination. It's not in my source photo. So sorry if you're looking around for it. Just um, the main thing is about creating variety. So maybe a broader one down here, slightly offset from the others, washing away, lifting off, known as lifting off. It's a wonderful technique. Um, so that's another way of creating form, putting form back into your picture. Okay, so let's look at this boat. We're getting a little bit smaller now um, in terms of the brush. We've got a rigger. Oops, let's get that on the camera. I'm just going to dip it in my water. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so quick. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I've got a very dirty jar of water now. I will suggest bringing a couple of jars maybe for the workshop, but um, yeah, the rigger's nice and sharp. Just, I'm constantly running my... Um, brushes through my fingers it's they're acrylic they're very hardy but it does control all the bristles are all working to the same effect then so this is very very um almost like uh, painting with a pen so we've got some alizarin crimson in here which i mentioned and i've got a lump of it and also some some a lake of it around in that well so let's pop some in with the rigger brush this is the stripe on the boat if it's against white, it's very clean and steady hand. Ooh. So I'm going to stand up. Use your little finger to rest if you need to. It's that corner next to the heart, the um, hull that you really want to get sharp. And I'm just going back into the liquid version. Now we've got a back to this boat here and we can always correct the angle in a minute um, I'm just getting it in now you can't see that line inside the boat in the reflection so we're not going to put that line in but we do have one that goes wraps around the outside of the boat here and this is on the outside but the side of the boat that's facing us and it's almost yes like drawing just look at the source photo with a little tilt towards the back of the boat. Does it go right to the edge? Yes, it does. Ellipses are very hard. We, we will talk about them in a couple of weeks because perspective on ellipses or oh, some of the worst aspects. Now let's go for a shadowy version of that same paint. I've gone for the burnt umber, which is a red brown. And then I'm gonna just bring it from the shadow side of the hull into the brighter lit side of the boat. And we'll talk more about light as well. Light is everything for me. So we've managed to get put in the positive, if you like, of the boat. Now let's get the reflection back into the alizarin. Now, some people will wiggle uh, lines so that they look reflected. Um, I tend to mainly just lift them off so they're a little bit more subtle. So lift them off or just grab your kitchen roll and then they become a little bit fainter. Nearly there. And then we're going to move again to the burnt umber, the burnt umber being the shadowed version of that line. And all I'm doing is checking back to that version of the same uh, area but also just looking at the, the gap between the bottom of the boat and that red line and I'm just going to I suppose I don't have to neaten this edge because it is reflected but I just want it to look a little bit tidier 
this sort of thing. Different days, I feel differently about things. But, uh, so we've got a bit of a boat now. We do need to just finally go back and address the strength of these shadows. I robbed some of the paint out of that one. Let's go back in. I'm going to put in some solid, this is solid um, raw sienna. And who says that watercolors can't be used like oils? They can, to a certain extent. <laughs> <laughs> and I do still paint with uh, water-soluble oils, and they don't behave like watercolor, just if, if you wondered. <laughs> you really can't get the drippiness with, uh, with anything else. It tends to trickle. So we're almost there. Um, I would then fin finally do a few touches, finishing touches of in the foliage. And um, suggest this is the corner of the brush. And then you'd have to do it in the bottom as well, just the reflection. Just starting to squint my eyes to try and <laughs> look at the. Uh, the relative values as in the tone of what I'm putting in now <laughs> and uh, very good to take a break from these things um, so I would definitely want to take breaks but those of you who are very eagle-eyed notice there's no reflected landing stage so let's just put that in by wiping it out it's actually going to be more subtle than the positive version of it above so this is the reflection of maybe the side of the landing stage not the underneath because you can't really see the underneath final bit lifting off i know we're gonna don't want to go over time that would be silly <laughs> don't worry you've got a few minutes it's right. a few minutes okay this is a it's got some supports here hasn't it So wiping them out. They're not important, as important as the boat. We don't want them to shout. But um, the original, you'll be able to see it's um, a little bit more developed than this. I think I've used a couple of other colours probably as well. Um, but if we I know it's, just... always, it's always hard talking, painting, answering yeah. questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Done, done really well so yeah. thank you that was, and it, it's it's really coming together you can it's see as you're there. adding yeah yeah no. <laughs> and very yeah. very different technique as well thank you Catherine that was a lovely one and, and how did you get on at home it, it was a bit different today wasn't it a different a few different techniques uh, for you to get your heads around and it'd be fascinating to see what you've created as as we near the end of the show if you've got any words of thanks that you'd like me to pass on to Catherine please write them down for me now on the Q&A um, or on live chat on YouTube also Catherine I'd love to see what you've created from this class and the post relating to this class is already on Facebook so simply search for shopkeep arty on Facebook and you'll find it there um, or if you're on YouTube you can see it in the uh, the link in the description below as well and remember we may pick a painting from those shared and transform it into an item on our platform as well so this brings us to the end of another a great arty class um, I'll now go back to Catherine and read out some of the comments we've had um, as she's tinkering they're all, tinkering they're I'll leave alone tinkering, can we always tinkering. so Eva says thank you Catherine a really good demo which I'll have a go at different techniques for me to try Karen wow fantastic and a great technique so enjoyed this can't wait for the workshop thank you so much Catherine Andrew thank you Hazel lots of fun looking forward to the long workshop Jacqueline thank you love your methods Lucy Catherine thank you so much for your tutorial it was a lot of fun and I love your work Victoria very different techniques the ones which I find interesting will will, will be having a go thanks Catherine Susie lovely artist and painting Jennifer thank you so much Catherine now very keen to do the full workshop can't wait I 
Irene, brilliant. Thanks, Catherine. Linda, th thank you for the lovely reflections. Judy, very lovely painting. I love the way Catherine mixes colours on the paper and not on the palette. Jean, uh, thank you so much, Catherine. I struggle with watercolour, so did appreciate this one very much. Uh, thanks to John and Artie as well. Thank you, uh, Jean. Uh, Denise, thanks. Can take these techniques to any painting. Diana, uh, yes, very different approach today. So fun. And Catherine, you did a fabulous teaching today. Very explicit explanations. And I took lots of notes. Thank you. Cheers. Uh -huh. um, right. Sally, really enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Looking forward to the workshop and very enjoyable. Nina, thanks, Catherine. Lovely Devo. Um, uh, Mary, glad you made it, Catherine. I thought you'd do so well. Mary from London. <laughs> Sydney. <laughs> yeah. Sydney, such beautiful work. Thank you. A really fantastic uh, show today. And with so many uh, patron special shows and exclusive giveaways this month, there's never been a better time to become one of our patrons, um, all from just five pounds for the month. Uh, this Thursday, for example, we're flying to Florida where we're going to be joining Vlad Yeliseyev for a special show all about layering. We're also hosting Matthew Palmer next Tuesday and an interesting guest, John Muir Laws, live from California next Thursday, all about nature journaling. So if you've ever fancied what that is all about, check out next Thursday. Um, and as a patron, you get automatic entry to all these events and you even get the link sent to you automatically the day before. So there's nothing to do except click on the link on the day. You also get access to lots of past recordings on our video library and all from just five pounds or about six dollars per month. I really can't stress enough how good a deal it is and it also helps support our channel. So I'd highly recommend checking it out even if you just join for a month to try it out. I know you'll love it. Um, anyhow, back to Catherine. Don't forget to sign up and join us both for the Longer Canal workshop. I know it's going to be really fun. We might even have a live stream from the canal itself on the day. Are you listening to me, Mum? <laughs> uh, so that you can feel like you're painting it plein air. Uh, that's assuming uh, I can obviously persuade her to, to do it. But um, anyway, uh, until next time, it's obviously goodbye from me. I hope you've enjoyed it all. And But obviously, thank you so much for your time and sharing some of your tips and techniques to Catherine. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you so much for all your comments and uh, look forward to painting with some of you in a little while. <laughs> thank you. And you get Thanks. a big round of applause. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and we'll finish on your painting. Lovely. <laughs>